Hello, we are out in the garden. I am made for the highlands of Scotland. It is 15 degrees Celsius out, but I'm sweating and I'm hot and I'm shorts and a tank top. So that's how Canadian I am. Canadian I am. So it's gonna get cold here this week, like really cold, freezing cold. But I do have a handful of seeds I'm direct sowing along with some that I'm gonna start kind of in the greenhouse today. I wanna show you how I'm sowing my seeds outdoors because I feel like it might be different. I do think that this is gonna be valuable to many of you, particularly if you've had issues with things germinating before. So, so first up we had radicchio. I've never done radicchio. I see most people actually plant these through cells like plugs. They start them in a greenhouse and then put them outdoors. I'm direct sowing them. I direct sow as much humanly possible. And these are actually direct sowed into my cold frame. That is because I don't know how frost tolerant these are. I've heard they're okay frost tolerant and they also don't need much light. So they are going into the cold frame. This may be a good shade crop to put in a space where there isn't much uh, light. And I actually am gonna try to grow some more of these because as you know, I have major dead spots in my yard. Dead, by dead spots, I mean shaded because of giant trees. So inside of that soil is, I used self-watering bed. I also did do some others underneath the cold frame. So I did an early, early champ uh, cantaloupe. I did these, these uh, squash, they look like pumpkins. They're supposed to be pumpkin-like, but more fruity, I don't know. And then this is just sugar baby watermelons and the warty pumpkins. I am also starting these indoors in the peat pot containers because these are very sensitive to transplant. When I plant these outdoors in the cold frame, my number one rule is don't put all your eggs in one basket because they may not make it. So I did one or two of each just to see how it works out. So some years you throw that Hail Mary and it, it gives you exactly what you want, great results. Other times you throw that Hail Mary and it, it doesn't, it ends in tears. So that's why you always double up. So you try two different ways to achieve this and that's what I'm doing. And again, those are in soilless medium. So when you are watching people work their soil on social media and it looks like really fluffy and fibrous and just unnaturally like if they dig their hands in and it just really like falls through their fingers and it doesn't look black like it should look black and granular and it looks yeah that you'll know what i'm talking about what it looks like in that video that is soilless that is peat that is peat and compost there's no perlite in that because that's a self-watering. So I do have the perlite on the bottom. So just keep that in mind. It is different to garden in, entirely different. So next up is another Hail Mary and that is the zucchinis. So I always call these my test pilots. These guys, I will plug in around the yard just to see where things are at. So if these guys sprout and stay alive for a decent amount of time, I know that it can be time to put out some less frost tolerant direct sows and that I'm also getting a step closer to transplants going outside. So like I said, these are test pilots because they are so dang cheap. You get so many per container and you don't want them all to live anyway. So again, don't sow all your eggs in one basket. These will go out again, probably the end of May, but there are four strategically placed around the garden in the front yard because the backyard we're redoing it. We're putting in more gardens. Okay, next on the list is radishes. So I have a ton of radishes this year. I found out last year that my husband loves radishes and I like radishes and turnips raw. Never thought I'd say that out loud, but yes, I like that. Particularly with like cottage cheese with mustard on it. I don't it sounds gross. Trust me, I, I sound like an eggplant eater right now, but they're pretty good. It's pretty good, give it a shot. So these are the three that I put out 
there are about four more versions indoors that I'm gonna have to get out sooner rather than later. No, not all your eggs in one basket again. All these packages still have seeds in them and they will be re-sown in May, end of May, after my frost date, June 10th ish um so these are slightly frost tolerant so you can get away with that the reason for sowing these so early is to escape the flea beetles so you sow them early and you get them in before the flea beetles arrive and then your hope is that you have more adult leaves that the flea beetles don't want to chew on so you're past that cotyledon stage the other option is to put them in a place where you put them in ground and then you have the the opportunity to you know cover them and save them from a flea beetle attack if you will so that's kind of where i put these guys these guys they put in because they're 60 day radish wabashi radish and i've never grown these before they're supposed to be very similar to the wasabi. I did these, I've never grown these before. I don't know what they're gonna taste like. They might be horrible. The watermelon radishes, these all, the tops on these all look the same, by the way. It's the, the color that you see when you cut into it. And yes, so that's actually pretty neat. And then for turnips, I'm doing purple prints again. Those are delicious. Like those are really, really tasty radishes. I don't know what it is. Like I would chew on those like I chew on carrots. Like I said, I sound like an eggplant eater right now or an okra eater, and we all know them. My palate is not that refined. And then I'm doing the Easter egg blend, so this is just like your classic little tiny radishes, all different colors, purples, pinks, reds, and white. Those guys went in as well. I am doing snow peas. So not all your eggs in one basket. These can be sensitive to frost, particularly ones that aren't just your classic snow peas, like these purple mist ones, which I, I love these. These are just the neatest, prettiest things ever. They're lime green on the inside, so cool. So I did do a row of these, a bit of a test pilot situation. I think they're gonna be okay. I don't, I direct sow a majority of my snow peas in the fall and they are a great indicator of when the soil is warming up and when things are starting to get going. So I have a whole bunch planted and when I was digging around, I didn't see any germinated, meaning the soil is still cooler and I should have taken out my soil thermometer and checked, but all of these are like colder soil seeds so i'm not too too worried about that uh for some of the more exotic direct sows that is something that you want to look for is the, the temperatures the melons are in that cold frame and that cold frame i had on place in place for you know several weeks at this point and that soilless medium tends to heat up quicker than soil so yeah that is one thing to note there so these guys did go in as well one question for you guys or for one person particularly on the Geek Crew that came to visit me at the CD Saturday talk I did in Prince Albert. When do I put the calendula in that you gave me? I still have it. I'm too scared to sow it because I don't want to wreck the seeds you gave me. So you could just comment down below. I would, I would love you for that. Okay, so when you're sowing outdoors in soil, actual physical soil, and you're digging around and you get clumps coming up. This is normal, this is aggregation. This is the glues from last year's microbes and plant roots, sticking all the soil together and making a soil structure. And soil structure is what we need to prevent against compaction. So it is wonderful when it's below <laughs> the subsurface layer, but when it's on the subsurface layer, it's not ideal because we need really good contact between seed and soil. So we call it, it's a very scientific term. We call it seeds, uh, seed soil contact. I know it's, it's a big word, um, but it's like, anyways. So you put your seeds in, you want the them to be in really tight contact with that soil surface. So what I do is I will crumble up that aggregation on that top layer. I won't dig down because I don't want to disrupt, you know, the lower structures because the roots will do that for me. Plant roots are very, very strong. It's not, nothing you have to worry about. So I break up that top layer and then I will sow my seeds in that space. And then after I'm done sowing, I will pat it down. If you're working in an, a space that has a lot of mulch and last year, so I do this every year, when I do transplants, I pile the mulch on because I can. 
and then I continue to pile them Ultron every single week or whatever, whenever I get more leaves and I end up with like a big thick layer. The beds that I direct planted into, not ideal for when you go to put seeds in that space that you're after and to remove all that, I mean, it's not, you could, you could, it's not gonna hurt anything, but I like to leave it because I like that humus kind of transition layer. It's really mimicking uh, mother nature. And in soil science, when we look at soil profiles, we actually call that the LFH layer, the litter layer, and yeah, so the LFH layer, I want that actually in my garden and I'm trying to build that up in all the different spaces. Now, some of those beds are like brand spanking new, so they haven't, you know, accumulated as much because they are don't have as many years of LFH layer de depositing because I don't overdo it. I put enough to get the job done. The ones that have too much that I'm now direct sowing into because I do rotate is to actually move the mulch to the side and then I just make a little channel and I kind of make sure that that channel is nice and fluffy. I sow my seeds into and then I pinch the soil back over and I pat, I compress it because we want really good soil seed contact. It makes, it helps, it helps enormously with germination. When you watch um, farmers going down a field, you'll notice they have these big, things behind them, the big rolling, big packers. There's a reason for that. The reason why they do that is because they get more bang for their buck when they actually do a little light compaction across that soil surface. So compaction is not always a bad thing. It can be a good thing. And I have a video coming out on compaction. So go check that out because it'll help you enormously. I'm going to go through all the different versions of it. So yeah, that is the outdoor stuff. Okay. So what am I starting indoors? I'm starting indoors zinnias because so these guys these guys don't transplant well they transplant horrendously actually by the way i put <laughs> in the morning no don't you even this is actually kind of dangerous the fact that it doesn't have a and they are more of a direct so crop now <laughs> you can direct sow them and if you live in a climate where you can direct so early it's wonderful because you will have flowers eventually. For me, I I can direct so and I will get zinnias in August because these are not frost tolerant to top it all off. I need to start these in peat containers. So I am I'm not using peat or the coconut. I'm actually using the cardboard. They're the ones from Dollarama. They're cardboard. <laughs> And so I'm going to be using those. You could use the paper pots if you get newspaper. I, we don't do any form of physical newspaper. It's all online. So you could. You could definitely fold those up and make your own. But yeah, that's all these zinnias are going to be going into the compostable pots. And then I am going to start just those more sensitive root plants like the pumpkins and melons and that sort of thing in the larger pots. So the choir pot the choir pots I showed you. If you missed my video on the different types of decomposable pots, which one you should choose for what, go check that out because I explain these ones and why they're appropriate for that application. I hope this helps you out. It's a really informal, fast video. I wanna make sure that you guys are on track. And if you're following along with me this year, then this will help you kind of be on the same page as me. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.